Hello and welcome to Midnight Scribes Creative Vibes, where we speak to the best of the bronies and discover what makes them tick. It's a bit of an open secret that I've always enjoyed the idea of moving out with several brony friends of mine to our own place to have brony hijinks and ponies, ponies everywhere. Now the only thing that would be slightly better than that though is that we, if we could live with the actual ponies themselves. Buck trees with Applejack, mixed tracks on the deck with DJ Pwn Free and saying to the cutie mark crusaders that I really have a cutie mark when it's actually just a reversible tattoo I bought for 99 pence in the corner shop. Well, my guest tonight spends his time in between his Cinemare Sin series and Greens and Ponies projects trying to keep Derpy from causing chaos in his house. He's a braver man than I, fillies and gentle colts. It's none other than Little Shy F.I.M. Little Shy, how are you doing? Pretty good, yourself? I'm good. I'm fighting the flu, but hey-ho, I'm Scottish. I'm braver than the flu. <laughs> I will fight it off, so do, don't you worry. <laughs> yeah, yeah I've, I've been there. It's not fun. Oh, I know, but hey ho, you know it'll pass. It just it always comes at the stupidest points, doesn't it? You never get the flu when you, you know, when you're trying to get off work or something like that. It's always when you're about to go on holiday or you know when something great's about to happen. It, I'm, yeah, I swear it's like some sort of mother's nature thing trying to actually target it just as a kind of karmic balance for everything. Sure seems that way. Well, I wanted to ask you a few things. I mean, firstly, I. When I was trolling for your channel, I love the fact that your introductory video, your first video as Little Shy FIM, was a ponified version of the first Roda trailer from Elder Scrolls Skyrim. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's where it all began, I guess. Well, I've got two questions I have to ask, which is, firstly, do you secretly think Fluttershy might be a dragonborn? And secondly, what made you decide to start making videos in the community and inspired that video? Yeah, yeah, certainly. I think uh, Dragonshy definitely... Uh you know, provide some evidence for that. But uh, I, it all started, uh, I've been making videos for a long time, long before I was part of the Pony fandom, and it just seemed natural to create a new channel for the with the Pony avatar and all that and start creating Pony-related videos. And of course, like you say, the, Sky, the Skyrim video is where I got my start because that was a simple enough video to do, and I thought people would enjoy seeing it. Skyrim was really big at the time. And from there, it just kind of, uh, I started making more advanced videos with uh, compositing and uh, more rapid cuts and editing and that sort of stuff, and it just uh, took off from there. Yeah, because I mean, uh, obviously that was your first video, but I've noticed that in the time afterwards, like you said, you were doing composite videos. We were doing a lot of uh, live action mix with the animations. Like, for example, you did quite a lot of videos with um, with Derpy making a quite welcome appearance in quite a few of them. And you know what I really enjoyed about them was that I mean, firstly, the quality of them is immense because you know, particularly like fan projects mixing live action and animated portions, it could be quite a hard thing to do. But you do it quite well, and you've always got the uh, quite a comic flair in the skits as well because they're quite short videos and you know it's always got something humorous going on is that all just a one-man job is it all is it you like do you do all the animation all the stuff behind the scenes and how does a traditional video like get made yeah for, for the most part i guess it is a one-man show obviously in my most recent pun Relief video i did have some help with a uh, voice from uh, pinky rose i think it was but either way other than like obvious other than like obvious voices and stuff usually usually i do do things on my own uh sometimes i get help from other people just general advice but usually usually it's one thing uh and then, of course, the, the compositing is usually, <laughs> the, the trick to it is really to trick people into thinking it's more advanced than it really is. For example, I'm not really an animator. I don't call myself an animator. And yet, I do have some custom animation in those videos, so I usually have to keep things very simple. Usually, it's a close-up on a face, or if it includes the body, it's just a vector of a body and then an animated face. So I don't really do like the full full body character animations, that sort of stuff. So usually, usually there's some uh, fancy camera work and tricks to making it seem more advanced than it is <laughs> <laughs> well hey that's the art of filmmaking isn't it if you can make something yeah. like better than what it actually is you know when you're actually editing it and so what do you actually use to animate the ponies and to put the footage together what programs are the tools of the trade um a lot of people the tools of the tools of the trade would be like after effects but i've actually never used any of those standard industry stuff i've always used something called hit film which comes from fx home i started as a customer with their super old product called vision lab and because I had that super old product, I could get newer versions of HitFilm at a discounted price and all that. And uh, it, it, it works like After Effects. It's a compositor. You know, you work in layers, but you also work in an editing t editing timeline. So it's like I, I kind of if you were to combine Vegas with After Effects, I think that would be a good way of describing it to people who haven't seen it. 
All right. Now, you see, I'm not uh, really much of a video maker. You know, I'm useless for any kind of sort of art-based product. You know, I'm not very good at videos. I'm not very good at arts. So I'm always intrigued by how people are actually, you know, come across in terms of making their videos and making the art and so on. And one thing I found really interesting was the fact that um, as you've kind of progressed, I mean, you started off with the, you know, the Skyrim trailer. You, you've done the live action derpy videos as well. But your main videos on the channel are your cinema sins. Cinema Sin 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 series. That's <laughs> their sin number one for Creative Vibes already. I've stuttered. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yes, the Cinema Sins series, I'm going to say this properly, which is a sort of parody and homage to the Cinema Sins series, uh, where the creators look at a particular film and they bring up the various sins that happen in the film. Uh, what's the average process like for making a single episode of Cinema Sins? It, uh, it has changed over time. There was a point when I was making those weekly, but I soon got burned out and that just wasn't as fun to do anymore. So the current schedule, I guess you could say, is I spend uh, one, to th- one to three weeks writing the script, uh, a couple days to record and uh, edit, and then uh, right, right now, actually, this is kind of brand new. I'm starting to upload on the first of every month, so I'm going to use like the entire month of time to refine and uh, make sure the script is just right before I record and make sure the recording is just right. So I'm going to spend a little more time refining things um yeah i yeah like i said it's the first of every month now and one thing that's always interested me as well is the fact that any sort of like i mean cinema or sins i suppose is kind of an analytic series as well you're looking at a show and you know you're showing the various kind of quote-unquote flaws that are in it it's like the animation errors which i never noticed until now until i watched some of your episodes and it's like how did i miss that like they didn't have ears or like, like teacups disappear you know and those sort of things it's just uh, firstly i'm amazed that those things kind of you know fly by you particularly if you're not paying attention to them as a as a viewer but uh, as a an analyst like when you're you know preparing for an episode and you're preparing for a cinema series uh, episode when you're analyzing one of the MOP episodes, when you notice these little errors, is that you, is it something like do you get a delight out of that, or is that something that you find quite annoying, or like how does it feel as an analyst when you notice flaws in this show? Yeah, analyst might be a bit too high of a compliment. <laughs> really, most of my sins are just little nitpicks and silly jokes. I think most of them are just jokes now. It, it's not so much, so much criticism anymore. And when it is criticism, it's always super exaggerated, just to kind of almost like a satire and the critical nature of some of the, uh, you know, the analysis community as a whole, just, just, you know, playful fun there. But, uh, but yeah, the, as far as the animation errors are concerned, a lot of them are found in the MLP wiki, actually. I'd say maybe 50, 50, I find from in the wiki and in the rest I find myself. And it's always fun to, uh, you know, like watching a scene and then saying, Oh, there's a odd bit of motion there. Let's pause that and go and frame by frame. And then all of a sudden to see like a weird, like a missing eye or missing ear or something. You don't even know. It's like only for like a frame or two. You would think you would see these things, but they happen so quickly. Your brain doesn't register it until you go into the, the frame by frame process. And that's usually what I end up doing in some scenes. And when you, um, you started off this show, I mean, obviously it was, um, at the same time you were doing a lot of the live action stuff, whereas now it's become a lot more based on cinema. And did you realize when you started that off that it was going to be your kind of bread and butter in the channel? No, actually. Uh, it first started off, oh, I don't even know when. It was a, f- a couple years ago, I'm sure. But uh, I, it was just a simple desire to combine cinema sins with ponies and see how that would work because uh, I wasn't too sure. No, Not a whole lot of people were doing that before me. I later found out someone called, called Buck Brony actually did make a couple episodes, so he takes credit for doing it first. But uh, no, I originally just wanted to make one or two episodes of the, the, the two-parter premiere. And it wasn't until after it got such a huge response, you know, Solo posts on Equestria Daily and getting all over Reddit and a bunch of other sites and it got a bunch more views than like any of my other videos. And that's where I decided, OK, this is something people want to see. I, I can make more of these. And I've just making, been making more of those ever since. Just riding the train, eh? just keeping on with it. Yeah. Well, how did you first? Co- I mean, I know CinemaSins and hopefully a lot of our viewers do as well. How did you first come across CinemaSins and what do you enjoy about the original show? That's a good question. I'm not. It was probably just a suggested video somewhere. Uh, maybe it was a movie I liked or something. I don't really remember. But uh, I don't know. Something about the the format is really well refined, and it just works as like a YouTube formula almost. You get a lot of watch time, but it's also not super repetitive. You get always room for new jokes and classic jokes alike. And just, I don't know. Just something about the CinemaSins format really stuck out to me. 
Oh, definitely. I mean, there's nothing quite like it on YouTube. I mean, it's when I first came across it a couple of years back, I think it was um, the episode on The Room, which is a great film to riff on at any point. Uh, you know, it was just such a great format for a, a show that I, you know, I was amazed that no one had actually come up with it before. Were there any particular films that they did that you kind of thought, oh, I'm so glad they did that? Yeah, I mean, really, the thing about CinemaSins is any film can be fun to uh, do a video like that on. Uh, I haven't like watched a whole lot recently, but every once in a while, I'll kind of tune into tune into the channel and see what they're up to. Um, yeah, no, no one film sticks out in particular, but it's fun how they sometimes do the big ones everyone knows about, and then some of the ones I've personally never heard of, and just to see how they compare, you know, that, that sort of thing is fun to see. Oh, definitely. I suppose it's that thing as well that, like you said, the great thing about Cinema Sins is that you don't necessarily have to have watched the film in order to enjoy the video because, you know, half the fun is the commentary itself, you know, and the little jokes that they put in. And You can almost watch it like a second time after seeing the film and get just as much enjoyment out of it. <laughs> oh, indeed. Like I've actually watched a couple of them, like uh, particularly, like I said, the one um, involving the room, like three or four times, just because it, it, it's kind of quotable. Like not just the film itself, but the commentary as well. And it's just, it's just ridiculously enjoyable. I love sharing it around to my friends, just because it's a, uh, <laughs> it's just I've never seen anything quite like it before, and it's great, particularly when it's a film that you really enjoy as well, or you know, it's some daft B movie, and you get to kind of just, you know, it's like Mystery Science Theater three thousand again. You know, it's just you get a riff entirely on these films and just have a good laugh of it, which is absolutely enjoyable. Yeah. Uh, what I wanted to ask as well is that you know most of your videos like the cinema series and your animations and so on they're very upbeat they're very funny you know happy sunny shiny what happened to you the day you did not just a toy <laughs> <laughs> not just a toy oh that one yeah well I mean that's the thing I've always used to enjoy making those kind of short experiences those short videos on YouTube long before the brony thing and uh, that one I don't know that one, it's just I guess the simple answer is it's just kind of easier to do that that subtle horror in that sort of video, you can just drag things out and put in some spooky music, and it just kind of works. It's, it's just easier to do, I guess, as opposed to like a big action video or some well-scripted drama. That was just a video we shot in a day, edited in like one or two days. It, it was just something kind of threw together for fun, my sister and I. Yeah, and I suppose the great thing as well is that ponies are particularly good for horror, you know, because of the fact that, you know, it's a sunny, bright, happy series. So whenever you get something that's a bit darker, it works quite well i mean i suppose it goes back to the um the whole cupcakes fanfic kind of thing as well where the you know they subverted pinkie pie as well and made her into this sort of complete and utter psychopath and so whenever you get something like that like those kind of horror experiences uh in the metal pony uh fandom it's all it always stands out for me because i remember cupcakes i remember the is it luna.exe i can't remember the is that oh, the game it's an old one yeah yeah i still have some slight nightmares about that one I'm just <laughs> <laughs> i've been trying to forget about that for years but i remember that and i remember cupcakes and so on and it's just it's always nice seeing it occasionally i mean i i like the happy stuff but i like occasionally to just see something a bit a bit on the darker side shall we say <laughs> yeah yeah the contrast is definitely more stark when you're dealing with a show like this i mean i'm personally not a fan of the super dark stuff but like like you said like that video and some of the stuff you mentioned you know they're fun parts of the fandom Mm. Are there particular uh, parts of the fandom that you do enjoy, like particular creators or things that you happen to dive into, like maybe fanfics or audio dramas, those sort of things? Yeah, not not so much on the fan fiction or audio drama side, but uh, I guess just YouTube is the simple, easy answer. Uh, you know, I, like I follow a lot of creators on YouTube, and you know, I I don't collaborate as much as I wish I could, but I do, you know, I do try to interact more with other brony YouTubers and that sort of side of the community. Mm. Is that just because, uh, in terms of not collaborating, is that just because of like time issues, or is it just because you haven't found the right people yet? It's like, and who would you like to collaborate with? Yeah, it's really just a matter of not really working on any videos that I can easily collaborate on. I mean, it feels like any sort of collaboration with the Sins video would be forced because at this point, I've made like seventy something videos. I'm used to doing it pretty much alone, besides the usual suggestions, which I appreciate a lot. But. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't know really what to collaborate on. I have done, you know, PMV collaborations. They're always fun, but they also take a long time to make, and I can't make them nearly as often as other types of videos. Is there particular people that you would like to collaborate though, with, though? Like, is there people that you've seen you kind of go, and I would really like to have, like, to do something with them, even if it's not on my video or if it was with them, you know? Yeah, like any of the uh, the big names, I guess, which, of course, I kind of, in a way, have with Bronies React, but... Uh... Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I haven't put too much thought into it because I don't really work on that many videos that are easy to collaborate on. 
Well, I mean, apart from the Little Shy FM channel, I know that you also do the Green Screen Ponies channel, which, for those who don't know it, provides edited clips of the show with the background edited out for use in family projects. Now, what inspired you to make that channel? Yeah, that was early on in the fandom. Back, I think, I believe, I'm pretty sure it was before the Cinema Sins thing took off. And uh, I was just looking for my place in the fandom. I, I kind of, I didn't, I wasn't a super creative person. I couldn't do art, music, anything along those lines. So I wanted to find some way to contribute my own time and efforts back to the fandom. And uh, seeing other people use my green screen clips from the show in their own PMVs was kind of, you know, my way of being a part of the fandom for a while there. Of course, now, uh, you know, I make a bunch of my own videos. And I still, you know, the green screen ponies thing is still fun, but I don't do that quite as often anymore. Is that just kind of on a request basis now? If someone has something interesting, you've got time to fit it in? Uh, so- sometimes. Usually if there's a new episode, like a clip I have to do, I'll jump in and do it. But uh, yeah, recently I- I've kind of neglected the channel. I do feel bad about that. Just, But it does take like hours to do like just a, a couple seconds worth of clips. So it's <laughs> it's not the funnest process <laughs> in the world. Oh, yeah, no, definitely. I mean, a lot of work goes into, you know, edge those backgrounds, of, you know, and making it so that clip can be inserted into someone else's project if they want it in. Yeah. Uh, have you seen Have you actually seen any fan projects where those clips are being used? Probably the biggest one is, uh, oh, I think his name is Hank, Hank Green from the Vlog Brothers or whatever. Uh, he did, uh, uh, I haven't seen it recently, but uh, he did a video about, like, his, he doesn't have a favorite pony. You hear about that music video? Oh, I don't actually. Yeah. I mean, I know, I know of Hank Green. I know of his work. Yeah. But... Yeah, I don't remember. Yeah, I can't remember exactly the title of the video or exactly what he did, but uh, yeah, he used green screen ponies in that video, and that was probably the the biggest video that ever used my my the clips I created. That was kind of cool. Alrighty, well, I wanted to ask as well, like, because um, like you said, you've done those particular shows, but I have to ask you about the show that brings us all together, My Little Pony. And I've got a few yeah. questions I have to ask. And first one, I think I already know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask anyway. Favorite character. <laughs> Yeah, probably Derpy. Yeah. People ask me why. I mean, it's just because she's just a fun, silly character. But at the same time, she's kind of like a representative of the fandom. We have like our own little piece of the show in her. And I think that's that's probably one of the coolest thing, things about her. Yeah, I mean, you know, the great thing about Derpy is the fact that, you know, she kind of came to prominence because people noticed the fact that, you know, her animation was off when, they, when <laughs> in the first episode she did. And then she kind of got claimed by the fandom as a new character. And Hasbro just decided to kind of, you know, to go with it, which is awesome. And, you know, it's great seeing her. And, like, whenever you see her cameo in a new episode or when she was in Slice of Life, you know, it's, it's always a joy seeing her around because she is just a lovely character. So I'm going <laughs> to gush if I actually say too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just quite the saga. The saga, just like, a, it's like a roller coaster of uh, events with her. Oh, definitely. No, nothing is straightforward when it comes to Derpy. <laughs> that is definitely true. And how do you actually cope with her around the house? <laughs> um, well, the, the, my my uh, my thing, my my uh, my spiel is that uh, we actually have a portal, and she comes in occasionally. I'm thinking about making a video explaining all that, but that's kind of been the long long standing joke. <laughs> Yeah, because I mean, I know she's always popping around under the bed, you know, making the muffins, <laughs> all the rest of it. I mean, I'm amazed you have uh, managed to keep her from being as uh, destructive as she can be. <laughs> yeah. And I suppose perhaps your favorite episode is that one with Derpy by any chance? Ah, uh, favorite episode? Actually, surprisingly enough, I think my, my answer would be Cancel That Wedding, just because of how well that one came together and how I think it took, at the time, it took everyone by surprise. No, no one expected the Changeling thing to happen. So yeah, that would be my answer. Cancel out wedding one and two. Oh, definitely. That was actually the point where I was sort of coming into the fandom. You know, I, I came in sort of very late in season two when I first started watching the show. So I kind of came in right at the point where that where that where those episodes were coming out. And that's what kind of converted me finally to the, the fandom as a whole. And how did you actually come to be a fan of My Little Pony in the first place? Yeah, I think for me it was around the beginning of season two, although I didn't actually start tuning in live until Hearthswarming Eve. And uh, the f- initial discovery was just one of curiosity. I think I found a pony video somewhere online. It was probably some silly YouTube poop or I don't know, some, some silly YouTube video I came across. And I was like, huh, there's some, you know, these cartoon ponies. Why are these popping up in all these videos? And it actually started, I went to like know your meme to find the story and how, how it all originated. And I found it really interesting how it's kind of like formed its own sub community out of, uh, you know, this 4chan joke. And just to, uh, you know, it's something, it's something I wanted to be a part of because everyone just seems so friendly. 
Oh, definitely. The fandom itself is, like you said, it is an incredibly friendly place. And, you know, ever since I've become a part of it, you know, they might have people I've met around the world, like so many friendly people. I've made so many great friends since then, and no doubt you have as well. And I, I know that, um, like we said, your first video was the sort of Skyrim video. But what was that kind of crossing point where you went, I, you know, from being a fan of the show to being, I actually want to create for this fandom? Like, was there a particular point where you, you decided for it or was it kind of like a gradual thing? Yeah, it was actually right from the beginning with, uh, you know, the likes of Green Screen Ponies and the Skyrim video. As soon as I discovered the fandom, I just wanted to find a way to bring my video making interest to it and, you know, just, you know, provide something for it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what I wanted to ask as well, because uh, something you mentioned earlier was when you were talking there about Green Screen Ponies is how you were trying to find your place in the fandom. So you were trying at different things like and I know a lot of content creators, you know, in the community, like I know some right now who are trying to get started and they don't really know where their place is. Do you have any advice or any suggestions for them? Yeah, the funny thing is I still kind of feel like I'm in that place, actually. I know that the Sins video has been really popular and I want to continue making those. But at the same time, I would really love to come up with something original because I almost feel guilty you know, getting subscribers and views from an idea totally stolen from Cinema Sins. So maybe someday I would like to make a more original series. That's kind of my personal goal. But as far as advice is concerned, uh, from personal experience, it's just a matter of doing what you enjoy doing and trying new things and seeing what works and sticking to it. All right, see, and I've, I wanted to ask as well, um, what is your opinion on the fandom itself? Like, just as a whole? As a whole, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah like, I, like I hinted to it towards it, it, you know, it's very friendly. Um, I, I think, you know, the thing I've always thought and said is that fandom is kind of what you make of it. It's just, it's there's no leadership or anything. It's Anyone has an opportunity to be a voice in it whether as a content creator or just someone who comments often, uh, it, it's, it's just, you know, a lot of fun to see how it can grow and change over time. And, you know, like the structure of the fandom changes over time. And I don't know, it just, it's just so dynamic. It's really cool that way. And um, what do you think in terms of like, cause you're one of the, the biggest names in the community, you know, I mean, I'm not going to quote numbers cause you know, I don't want to be too crass about that, but you're a huge, you know, member in the community and you're, you know, part of Brony's react and you've got all these different series has, this is going to sound like a bit of an old question when I say it, but how do you think things change when you, or actually does anything change when you happen to get a bigger number of subscribers or you happen to meet more people? Is there any sort of dynamic change there for yourself as a creator? Like, is there any sort of pressure behind you to kind of put out more of the same thing or to try different things? Yeah, it certainly did change a bit. Uh, I It is less uh, preferable to just upload random stuff to my channel for the fun of it. I feel like Everything needs to be more refined and meet certain guidelines for YouTube optimization. And it's a little more a little more impersonal, and that's kind of takes some of the fun out of it. But, of course, I have a secondary channel for that sort of stuff. But as far as, far as day-to-day life, things aren't too different besides reading more comments and interacting with more people. But where things really got, like, surreal and hard to describe is attending BronyCon and meeting people, like, self-proclaimed fans and people who just come up to you and want your autograph. It's just such a weird experience that I don't think I'll ever get used to. At the same time, it's tons of fun, and I, I wouldn't, you know... I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't give up any. I wouldn't <laughs> want anything in return for it. I mean, what am I trying to say? It's yeah. Like I said, it's it's just something that leaves me speechless, literally. Oh well, listen, that you know, that's just <laughs> now I'm speechless. This is <laughs> this is yeah. not. <laughs> if the air you speech, speechless, this is not a good way of going. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um. Well, I tell you what, I think we're actually near the end of the interview, so I'm going to have to wrap things up just there. But firstly, I've got to say thank you so much, Lil Shy, for coming on. I hope this wasn't too strenuous an experience as an interview. <laughs> no, it's great. Th- thanks for having me. Oh, listen, don't mention it. No problem at all. And before uh, I wrap up the show, I have to ask, uh, where can we send our subscribers? Where are you on the web? Yes, uh, well, of course, my YouTube channel is Lil Shy FIM. Uh, and my most active social media account would be Twitter. So it's just also just a little shy flame on there. Um, yeah, those are the two big ones. I do have other links on my about page in the channel for those interested, though. All right. Yeah, and what we'll do is we'll put all those links in the description below. So, guys, you can go and check out Little Shy for yourself and uh, watch out for Derpy when you go into the channel. <laughs> yep, yep. Derpy's everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to wrap up the show just now. My thanks to Little Shy FIM for coming on the show. My thanks to you guys for watching. And of course, if you want to get in contact with us, well, we have our Facebook page at the Helm Bronies and our YouTube channel where you're watching this episode right now. And we also have a Twitter and a Tumblr. And oh, heck, we're everywhere. You can find our links below if you want to get in contact up with us you know if you've got constructive criticism praise perhaps you're a content creator in the fandom as well and you want to be interviewed on the show get in contact with us send us links to your work we will see what we can do 
But we will wrap up the show there for tonight. Thank you all so much for watching. And the final word from Midnight Scribe is, as always, please subscribe. Thank you.